Prabhupada took us to Vrindavan, and this was like the ultimate experience for us. Prabhupada coming back to his spiritual home with so many sons and daughters. This was the high point of our our India experience with Srila Prabhupada entering the, the magic spiritual realm of Krishna itself. Everything he had been teaching us and for years came into focus. We could see now, oh, this is Vrindavan. Such intimate, sweet exchanges we had. This visit in 1971 of Srila Prabhupada was very, very historical in our Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. It was the inauguration of the fulfillment of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's desire that the holy names of Krishna be spread to every town and village throughout the world. Lord Chaitanya went to Vrindavan and he sent the six Goswamis there to establish it as a place of pilgrimage for people all over the world. When Rupa and Sanatan went to Vrindavan on Lord Chaitanya's order, they were there to establish it as a place of pilgrimage for people all over the world. Obviously for, for people who would become Vaishnavas from every town and village in the world. That was Lord Chaitanya's vision. And this visit was the beginning of the fulfillment. The first time Vaishnavas from the West who were committed to Krishna consciousness in a relatively large group came on pilgrimage to the holy dham of Sri Braj. Look, he's so healthy and exuberant. He's back home. This is where he hatched out the whole Hare Krishna movement. This is where Krishna empowered him to come and come west. And little Saraswati, who was one of his favorites, she went around, followed him wherever he went. Sometimes he would grab her hand and walk with her. If Saraswati didn't come to his room every morning around 8 o'clock, he would sometimes ask, And where is Saraswati? <laughs> he expected to see her every morning. And it, quite often he would play some trick on her when she came, either to make her laugh or cry. <laughs> but he would always make up and give her some nice, sweet... Here he's showing us the sights, showing us around the samadhis of great Vaishnavas behind Radhadamadar temple, explaining a little bit about who is buried where those days it was all run down and practically abandoned. Well, most of Vrindavan was practically run down and abandoned. We used to think that Raman Reti was far out of town. Prabhupada revived the whole spiritual life of India, starting with Vrindavan. Vrindavan flourishing, spiritualized city because of Prabhupada. Of course, Rupa Goswami's Samadhi there, Prabhupada's favorite place. He used to say that Rupa Goswami inspired him to go to the West and spread Krishna consciousness. As he would sit in his room and gaze out on his Samadhi year after year and chant and read, translate. When we arrived in Vrindavan, um, <laughs> I remember walking into Srila Prabhupada's room and paying my obeisances and saying, Srila Prabhupada, what should we do now? And he looked down at me and he said, just wander. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. I just went out into the Vrindavan village and uh, everything I'd read about in Nectar of Devotion and Krishna book, you know, I was thinking of those things. And I wanted to take rest under a kalpa briksha tree. It's something I'd wanted to do for a long time. So I just actually found one tree in the in the forest, and 
I actually fell asleep and slept very soundly and very deeply for a couple hours. And when I woke up, it was evening time. And I didn't really know where everybody was, but I heard in the background the kirtan going on. Hare Krishna. And so I followed the sound and I arrived at this big uh, program where all Srila Prabhupada and all the devotees were and the lecture had just stopped and they were serving out prasadam. It was a great day in my life, you know, just the way it worked out. Prabhupada was giving a, a lecture in a garden. There was a small pandal set up and many Brijabhasis came to attend that. It was somewhere in the area of Radha Govinda Temple. And somehow or other I came late. And when I arrived, Prabhupada was just leaving, walking through a field back to his car. People were lined up on both sides to offer obeisances. And I offered obeisances and Srila Prabhupada stopped in front of me. And when I got up, Prabhupada very affectionately showered his mercy upon me and told me how he was very pleased that I was so much attached to living in Vrindavan. And I was so ecstatic and we got into the ambassador car at the Delhi airport. Sharmashinda was there and Prabhupada was sitting in the front and we were riding to Brindaban, and Prabhupada was quiet. And I was thinking, he's going to give some spiritual sloka about Brindaban that will inspire us. Prabhupada was quiet. Finally, I hear Prabhupada clear his throat, and he said, Cement. We must get cement and build a water tower like that. He pointed out the water tower so we could have sweet water. But look at that. No, I'll never forget that kirtan. It was like you could feel demigod showering flowers. And the people were stunned. They never, because the way we did kirtan was, it was, Prabhupada did kirtan different than the traditional like Bengali or something. And when we first went to India, we were chanting like Prabhupada and it was like the people had never heard. It was so potent. Prabhupada leading and the disciples following. And these people had never heard anything like it and they were just thunderstruck. I just loved, I mean, Kirtan was my savior. It was my shelter. It, it washed everything away. It washed away all anxieties. To me, the perfection of life is to be with Srila Prabhupada and Kirtan. It's, it's like all I want in life, and I don't care where it is or when it is. I, that's just all I want. Now, when Srila Prabhupada came to Vrindavan, it was after he had left for less than five years. He had gone away to America, presumably to die amongst the infidels or be lured by the temptations of the West. But anyhow, when he came back, surrounded by disciples, after having made a famous tour through Surat and other parts of India, big Pandal programs in Calcutta, in Bombay, in New Delhi, that were in the newspapers, were traveling by word of mouth. So when Prabhupada appeared there with a few of his many devotees, it was an astonishing event that people could not ignore. And when he marched through, it was a triumphant march. They did not fail to be deeply impressed. Because who else in the history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, even from the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, could lay claim to such a feat? Srila Prabhupada took us to many holy spots in Vrindavan. We would go by bus and he would ride in his ambassador car. And here we are at Brahmandagat in Gokul, where Mother Yasoda saw the universe in Krishna's mouth. Srila Prabhupada is telling the story, much to our delight. His eyes get big when Mother Yasoda sees the creation.
for most of us, this is the first time we'd seen the Jamuna, and we were very eager to bathe in her transcendental waters. The bus went to Gokul, and we came out. Dinanath Prabhu was leading the kirtan, and Prabhupada came out of his ambassador car, which was in front of the bus. And we walked for some time up behind Prabhupada doing Harinam Sankirtan. And Prabhupada stopped us and turned around and said, this is the wrong Gokul. This is Balabacharya's Gokul. We want to go to Mahavan Gokul. So then we all got back in the buses. <laughs> and from there, from what I remember, we went to Brahmandagat, where we saw the beauty of the holy river Jamuna. Prabhupada came down with us and he sprinkled water on his head. Then he told all the devotees that they should have full bath. And I believe Prabhupada was feeling somewhat ill that day, so he said that he was not going to take full bath. So he was sitting on the steps and the devotees were bathing and Prabhupada was watching us. He was so happy. His disciples, who he loved so very, very dearly, who he gave his life and soul to, to give them Krishna's love. Here they were in Gokul, at the holy banks of Brahmandagat, happily taking their baths in the sacred river Jamuna. What that must have meant for Prabhupada. Uh, he's sitting there watching us take bath, and pretty soon <laughs> he wants to go in with us. <laughs> what can I do? My devotees want me. <laughs> come on, Prabhupada, come on in. Here we are saying our Gayatri's on sacred threads standing in the Jamuna River. Ah, there he comes. Ah, oh, Prabhupada. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> A few of the ladies were kind of clustered together, and Palika was there. And at some point, we noticed that Srila Prabhupada was going in the water, although at first it didn't look like he was going to go in. Suddenly it was like, Prabhupada's going in. You know, I looked at Palika, we had the same reaction. We're going in too. We have to be in there with Prabhupada. And we have to do it fast because he's going to say Gayatri, and we wanted to say Gayatri with him. But both of us had only been in India for like a month, and we knew that the ladies bathed in the Yamuna, but we didn't know how they did it. You know, should we go in with our full saris and then walk around dripping wet? Because we, we only had a few seconds. Palika was down to her slip, <laughs> and I was like, okay, me too. And uh, it didn't matter anyway, because as soon as we hit the water, we went right under. So we were up to our necks in water anyway, so we were covered. And we wanted to get as close to Prabhupada as we could while he was saying Gayatri, and we got really close, like within 10 feet of him. And we just our little heads, you know, we're like scrunched under the water, and we got to say Gayatri with Prabhupada that day. And to me, that that's the most memorable experience of the whole thing, was that Gayatri in the water with Prabhupada so close.